Sometimes in life we just suffer. Sometimes it's from being totally withdrawn. Or so much stress that we are totally anxious. Or so tired that we are totally burnt out. But our current position is not our final destination. No, indeed. There's hope. So whether it's your personal life, your career, your relationship, your business, or your job, we say there's reason to believe again. And we present from Andy's personal development, the breakout room. It's the place for health, happiness, and prosperity. Stay tuned for more. Hi, this is Andy, and we are live in the break room. We have a wonderful and a special guest to share with you today. Her name is Phoebe Trotman. She's an accomplished athlete and entrepreneur, and she's also written an amazing book entitled Never Quit on a Bad Day. But this is just me speaking. How about we introduce our guest and she tell us all about herself a story, a life, a book, and a message she wants people to know from her experience. Welcome, Phoebe Trotman. Thank you so much, Andy. It is a pleasure and honor to be with you today. Thanks so much for having me on. Uh, thank you for coming on and for being with us with all your positive vibes. And I know this is going to be an amazing episode. I'm really looking forward to it. So, Phoebe, I want you to help us understand Phoebe Trotman growing up as a young lady. Yes. How were the most formulative years in your life were for you? How much of it can you recall and share with us? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Andy. And I just first and foremost want to say I love what you're doing with this podcast and just everything that you're doing to inspire and encourage and support and educate people literally around the world. So I just want to say kudos to you for taking that step forward. So I grew up in Vancouver. Yeah, no, absolutely. I just I, I'm so inspired by when people take action in whatever capacity. And that's the first thing I would just encourage listeners and viewers to do is what can you take action and that lights your fire? Because because when we start living in our own joy and passion, it inspires other people, even if they're not looking to do the same thing, because they just see someone take a step forward, it in their subconscious, it allows them to feel like, well, I can take a step forward too, in whatever capacity. So I just want to acknowledge that because it, it takes um, an incredible person to take action. So thank you for everything that you're doing. So you asked about my background. So I grew up in uh, suburbs of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and I started playing soccer at a very, very young age. And the reason I bring up soccer is because soccer has been a vehicle for me throughout my life. I still continue to play. I've had incredible accomplishments in playing as an athlete. And I feel like my formative years, because I was on the soccer field so much and learning and growing, I learned a lot, a lot life skills there and you know I started off as a I was a young girl started off playing on an all boys team I'm a person of color I started off playing on a team that was all Caucasian and it was it was an experience I mean at the end of the day we were all on the field and just wanted to play and enjoy it that being said I learned a lot about I think I've learned a lot about people in general I think through through my journey as an athlete 
as an athlete, I mean, I've had some incredible accomplishments in terms of like national championships and um, individual awards as well, too. However, I share this, that what the, I've had been able to have some incredible highs. And the only reason I've been able to have so many highs in terms of my athletic career was because of the tough stuff, the getting up from a team, the not getting as much playing time as I would have liked, the coming second or third or not even making a final and, and navigating those and bouncing back after injuries and that whole process. And so the, the whole like my whole thought process right now is how can we start sharing more of those challenges so people realize like we all go through struggles and even though again it may not be the same struggle there's going to be parallels and if we can start sharing what we did to push through that it helps other people as well too through their journey yeah thank you for sharing phoebe i love it i love the spirit i love the passion thank you so much so did you get the kind of support that you wanted or needed from your family with regards to playing soccer would it there for you in a manner in which you could appreciate? Absolutely. My parents, um, incredible. Like the reason I started soccer was I have an older brother, four years older. He played. And so I was the little sister going to the soccer field. And so I was like, I want to play too. And my parents right away, I mean, they put me in. My parents have always been incredible cheerleaders uh, just in terms of supporting my growth as an athlete and wanting to do, you know, driving to practices and extra sessions. And, you know, I literally remember we'd go to church and soccer. We play a lot of women's soccer on Sundays and we go to church for the first part, drive 30 minutes to go to church. Then I'd be there for like the first Sunday school. And then I'd change in the bathroom. My dad and I would hop in the car and we'd drive to my game. And so, and that was just kind of what we did on Sunday. So my parents were incredibly supportive and just instilled a lot of important values in terms of like work ethic and dreaming big and going after those dreams and taking action. And so I'm just, I'm so grateful for um, that, that, family environment that has always been extremely supportive. And I know I'm very fortunate. Some families aren't, some people don't have that same um, support yeah. system. And then that's where you have to, even if you have it, it's important to choose it from other ways. But even, especially if you don't have that, then it's really important to find good people to be around. Yeah. You sound very philosophical. And I say that because you spoke about the many highs you had, but you also brought the fact that most of them came as a result of the many lows that you would have experienced. Mm -hmm. so tell us, what are some of the lessons that you learned along the way coming out of those lows that made you eventually gravitate to the highs? Yeah. So, I mean, there's been lots of bumps in the road. I mean, let's just talk about the athletic side and we can get yeah, into the entrepreneur yeah. side at another point or another time. Um, but yeah, in terms of, you know, being an athlete and inspiring athlete and playing and, and playing as um, trying out for a team and most teams that I tried out for, I had a great experience, made the team was, you know, playing, contributing on that team. However, I do remember I was in my teenage years and I went out for a new team in a different environment. I was playing a different position and I didn't make the team. And I remember being devastated and just crying and crying and crying because I, I just was shocked that I didn't make it to the next step. And then I found out that another teammate of mine had made it who, you know, most people were kind of like, well, how did she make it if you didn't make it? And, you know, that doesn't help anything because then you're feeling even lower, like, mm -hmm. well, what, how come? And, you know, it was devastating. It really was a hard moment and a hard lesson. And, you know, my parents kind of encouraged me to be, to well, what can you do in this situation? Like what is in your control right now? I didn't make the team that's out of my control, but what can I do going forward to change that story? And I worked so hard because I never wanted that situation to happen again. I wanted to make sure that I was such a, a sharp athlete. I was fit. My touch was on, et cetera, et cetera. So that when I was in that situation again, maybe a different environment, but that it would be so obvious that it'd be like, yes, Phoebe Trotman, we want her on that team. And so, but I had to have that. And thankfully, again, with my parents, we sometimes have to have that, those tough conversations with ourselves in those moments of what can we do to change that narrative? Now, I know it didn't end up going back into that environment, but I chose a different soccer path in terms of my career. And I did make sure that I was always training harder. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you don't, most people don't see, but that, that happens behind mm -hmm. the scenes. We see yeah. the, the game highlights. However, what about the training in the rain, the going for the run, the being out at the soccer field, you know, by myself working on my touches. And so those are all things that I always encourage people, like when you're going through those frustrating moments, you know, what can you learn from it to take forward, right? We're not, we may not be able to change the exact situation that we're going through. You know, some things are out of our control, but what can we control? That's what we focus on. And in that 
that experience, if you will, for that story was I could control myself and make sure that I became the best player that I could be. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I love it. I'm hearing three things and you can tell me if I'm wrong. I'm hearing resilience. I'm hearing determination and I'm hearing discipline. Mm -hmm. I love it because I think most of the young people are really challenged to find that semblance of quality, measuring those things, those virtual talents within their lives, and then having the desire to never give up, no matter what takes place, never quit on a bad day. Yes, I, Andy, I, I, yes. <laughs> so I'm, saying, I'm saying to you, how did you dig deep, Phoebe, to find that inner fortitude, that inner strength that you decided I was not going to quit. I was going to get my peace. I was going to reach my goal. I was going to get it done. So I think a big piece of that is having that clarity in terms of what does what does one want? Like in that case, I love soccer. I love it. I'm passionate about it. I enjoy it. It fuels me, you know. So in that, if we go back to that story that I just shared, it was a matter of like, well, I love what I'm what I do. And that was a question with my parents. They're like, well, do you want to play? And I was like, yes, I want to play. And then, okay, well, what can you do now going forward? So one of the things I always encourage young, well, everyone really is to look at, well, what is it that you want to create? I knew I wanted to be a soccer player. I wanted to contribute to the best of my ability on whatever team I was going to be on and to be, again, a contribute, not just a contributing player, but a impact player, if you will. Yeah. And so then I knew what I had to do. So I always encourage people, do you have a clear focus of what you're looking to accomplish? Because there are going to be those bumps in the roads. However, if you have clarity on where you're headed, that helps to pull you forward because then you can refocus on that. And, and I encourage people to do that for every stage of your life. What are, what are you looking to accomplish? Because when you're going after your goals and dreams, it is, there's going to be some pit, there's going to be some pits, there's going to be some speed bumps, there, you might have to take another route to get there. But ultimately, if you know where there is, and I use air quotes for there, because there is always moving, if you will, but if you know what you're looking to create and where you're headed, focus on that, even when you have those bumps to kind of, you know, take that moment and regroup. There's also a moment, you know, gratitude, just being grateful for the ability to play. My parents instilled a huge importance of just being grateful and thankful. And so even though, yes, it, there's been those challenges and pitfalls and, you know, we're just talking in soccer, but in business and life, it's like, well, what can you be grateful for? Because gratitude will shift your focus. It'll shift your perspective on a current situation. It doesn't minimize what you're going through at all. It it just allows you to have a little bit of a glimmer of hope to continue to move forward until you can continue to sit in that. So I always encourage people to have gratitude. You know, what can you be grateful for? I have in my uh, phone a cal like a event that every single day at 9, 10 p.m. Pacific, it pops up and it just says, I'm so happy and grateful that. And I started that because I knew I needed to have more time of gratitude. I start in the morning, I start at night, but it just allows me to have that shift. So for anyone, you know, listening or watching, set a calendar invite, whatever day and time works best for you and just put it in there so that you have that moment to just go, what can I be grateful for right now? Because it does shift your perspective for sure. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Phoebe. I appreciate it. The gratitude thing. I think that many a times we take so much things in life for granted. Mm -hmm. And that comes back to hurt us because you can't have that kind of attitude and expect things to come your way. If, however, you place real tangible value on the stuff that's happening in your life, and as you rightly say, just be grateful. Just have a spirit, a heart, a mind of gratitude for what is happening and realize that you don't necessarily have to think of being like a victim, but like a student of the situation that you are in. What can I learn from this? What can I get out of this? Why am I experiencing this? I, I wonder if there's something more that I'm not seeing in this for me. And I'm getting all of that out of you. Here's a question for you. Is that the very thing that you said to yourself, you know what, this is not just about soccer, this is not just about sports, but this is just, for me, a lifestyle. And I'm going to channel that into a spirit of entrepreneurship. How did you make that transition 
What was the catalyst? Was it an aha moment or was it something that incrementally or gradually came to the fore for you? Great question. First, I just have to say student of the situation. I absolutely love that, Andy, because that's what I say, like, how can we learn from what we go through? But just that phrase, a student of the situation is so powerful. So I just wanted to highlight that because that's brilliant right there. Um, how did I end up becoming an entrepreneur? Well, it's interesting. I had my mom had stayed home with my brother and I when we were young and she had a home based business. And so I always had this like vision of, you know, having something that I could work from home. I didn't know what that was going to be what it was going to, you know, I just was open to it. And uh, out of university, I was working full time at a computer company. I was very uninspired by my job. I just was kind of in this where I'd go in, I do the same thing over and over again. And so I started um, looking at side projects, if you will. I started a coaching company with a teammate of mine where this all this was on the side. I started a kind of connection, you know, where we were bringing the Caribbean community together for events. Uh, I started learning about real estate investing because I learned the concept of passive residual income and I wanted to get some of that as kind of my, was my mentality. So I had all these kind of side projects while I was working full time. And it was great because I'd, I'd go in, I'd go to work, I'd finish a project, I'd tell my boss, he'd be like, okay, give me some time and I'll come and tell you what to do next. And in that time, I'd work on my my side projects. And right. in my mind, I kind of planned to continue to do that until my side projects, the income was what I wanted. And then I transitioned into entrepreneurship. However, I have to say, like, sometimes if you don't make a move, God will make that move for you. And that's kind of what happened because um, he came into my boss, my boss came into my office one day and basically said, you know, unfortunately, the company he's going bankrupt or all laid off. And I was just like, wait, what? You know, and so I had a roller coaster of emotion. On the one hand, I was like, oh, well, this is kind of cool. I don't have to go to work. But then on the other hand, it's like, okay, well, now what? And this is why I'll go back to that, having that clarity, because in that moment with being laid off, I sort of paused and went, okay, well, what do I want my life to look like? Like, what do I want my life to look like in the next two years, three years, five, 10 years, if you will? And I knew I wanted to have control of my time and I knew I wanted to have something that I could build for anywhere because I love to travel and, and experience other cultures and, and whatnot. And so then I looked at what I was doing. And in that too, I should mention, I had found out um, about a network marketing company that I had gotten started with mostly to use it as a tool for my soccer coaching company. And then when I kind of sat there and looked at it, I was like all the different avenues I could have gone in. And I thought, you know what, I, this is kind of a unique tool. Like I can help people with it. I can build it from anywhere. There's still that team building aspect. And so then I decided, I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And so there were a lot of bumps in the road in the beginning because I, just kind of I figured I could do it myself I could do it this way and change the system and all sorts of things and um, so learned a lot and now here we are 17 years later and it's been an incredible journey I've just grown so much as an entrepreneur if you will yeah so let's have a little bit of fun Phoebe thanks for sharing that passionate story what position did you play initially for soccer I was a front striker oh so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I could have kind of second guessed that but so let me just hear it from you so did you have a role model a female striker or maybe even a male striker maybe a, a ronaldo or messi or a neymar jr somebody that when when it came to you being on the pitch you kind of idolized some of the stuff that they did Yes, I did. And so we're going to go even further back, actually, Pele. So, ah. I, yeah, I just, oh, incredible. That's intriguing. Incredible. That's yeah. intriguing. <laughs> a big fan. You know, yes. I grew up, because my parents, they didn't play soccer. My family's from Barbados. Like, they, okay. what we would do is my dad would go, we'd go to the library. We'd literally rent videos of Pele playing. And my brother and I would watch these videos. Like, we'd, you know, put it on and watch it. And that's sort of how we learned how to play from a skill base. And so I've always been a huge fan of Brazil and just, you know, because of that, that foundation. So if anything, yeah, Pele has just always been, I mean, the, the athletes that you mentioned are incredible incredible footballers absolutely yes, yes, um but uh, pele is is just such a yeah was such an incredible athlete and just amazing yeah. inspiration to people all over the world i love it and i think basically i believe he kind of paved the way for the rest of these guys and they they have just took up the mantle and run with it and sort of revolutionized the game so that's so i i see so many female being involved in soccer and for the last world cup it got a whole lot more attention than any other time in history. Marketing, television rights, crowd support, home support, you name it. So that was just fantastic. 
Now, I want to look at something that you said. You said you strongly believe that in business, sports, relationships, and life, we should be more open about our struggles. Phoebe, how do we get people to be a little bit more vulnerable and open up with their struggles, realizing that it's the best way to get help? Yeah, that's a big question. And so I would start saying first it is people need to have a safe space, if you will, right? At the end of the day, strong relationships. I mean, sometimes it's creating that safe space where people feel like, you know what, I can, I can tell you what I've gone through. Sometimes it's after you go through things as well, too. Sometimes it's, you know, when things are really raw, like I, I look back and unfortunately I lost my dad. Um, it's been 12 years now, but in the initial stage, I wasn't able to talk, even say that without breaking down. And absolutely that was, that was it. I would just break down. And so um, sometimes it happens. It's after you've gone through it and you're in kind of, if you will, on the other side of it, that we are able to now start to communicate a little bit more of what some of the challenges are. I think it, it also is coming from a place of how can we help with what we've gone through, right? Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, now I have such a different level of connection with people who are going through, you know, challenging times in terms of lo losing loved ones, because I've had that experience with mm -hmm. losing, you know, numerous loved ones over kind of my lifetime, if you will. And so helping people in that sense of just understanding, again, we, we not able to, um, completely understand because everyone's, you know, has their own way to deal with things and cope. I just think letting people know you're not alone in it. So just being there, being support and just giving people like a safe space, if you will, where they can start to share what are some of the things they've gone through. And yeah, again, it might not be right away. It might be when they come out the other side of it and realizing that even if someone isn't going through the exact same struggle as you in terms of the situation, there are always parallels and some of the things that that, for example, I might have done to kind of move through the grief process could help someone else in terms of what they're going through. Yeah, I, I love it. That was so clear, so concise. It was a very appropriate answer. And I want to share something with you. And I think this is going to light you up a bit. But I want you to tell us, how did you come up with this Never quit on a bad day. What inspired you to use that as the name of the publication? So I had heard this saying uh, many, many years ago, and I absolutely just loved it because it really sums up like because so many times we when we quit something we usually quit on a bad day we quit because we're frustrated we're angry we're disappointed we think something's not fair and we're just like that's it i'm done i quit like most of the times if i, if I encourage people to like think back on their journey and most of the times when someone's quit something, it's when you're in that low, when you're in that negative emotion. And so when I heard this saying many, many years ago, I was like, oh, you know what? That's a brilliant saying. It's just, again, mm. concise. It, it sums it up. And so I've kind of carried that through in many different avenues, whether it's in athletics and, and in business and just in life. And so I actually was with some friends and, you know, I go through the story a little bit more in the book about why I decided to write this book. Um, but in terms of the name, when I finally realized like, okay, yes, I'm going to do this. I was like, oh, that'd be such a good name for a book. And so I, I do this thing. I call it my open the door, close the door thing with God. And so I was like, okay, God, if I'm supposed to write this book, like, let me just put in, you know, if the domain name never quit on a bad day is available, if that URL just never quit on a bad day.com is available, then I know I'm supposed to move forward with it. Okay, cool. If it's not, then I know, you know, move forward within another way. And so I was really shocked because I, I truly didn't think the domain would be available. I'm like, it's such a, it's a well-known saying, everyone knows, you know, and I put it in and it was available. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm, I guess I'm working on this book project. And so um, I bought the domain right then and there. And then I just got really, really excited about it because I realized that the more people understand and hear the saying and truly live it, just again, we started off talking about you and your podcast and everything you're doing, the more people 
can really just move forward with that mentality of they're not going to quit on a bad day. They're going to push through it. Just it, it's going to inspire people in so many other ways. And so, uh, yeah, it's been it's been fun. And everyone's really just grabbed onto the title, especially people who have never heard of it before. They're like, oh, that's brilliant. That's such a good saying. And so uh, that I'm really excited about that more people will hear it. They'll understand it and then truly live it. And I'm not saying there's never a time to quit. We mm -hmm. talked about that as well in the book. There are times when, when you do need to quit or transition into something new. But if you're going to quit, do it on a good day, not a bad day. Right. Yeah. Spectacular. <laughs> so do you have sessions where there's book talks happening and you get the opportunity to in person actually correspond or communicate with people and you tell them, where that feeling, that passion, and everything that you learned, that you put into the book came from. Did you have some of those experiences? And how enjoyable was it for you? I'm seeing the smile on your face. It was amazing. So I have had one, um, I was invited to speak at a, a large event in Calgary, in Calgary, Alberta, in yeah. August. And so it was about a month, you know, three weeks after the book launched. And so it was a chance to, you know, do some book signing and connect with people. And it was amazing because some of the people that were at the event had already purchased the book and read it. And so I got to hear their thoughts on it and their stories from it. And just hearing when people see the cover and, and the saying of it and just their response to it. And it was really hard warming and even since then the people who have purchased it and written reviews like hearing how and sent messages how the book has inspired them to move forward again in their own dreams their own goals it's provided encouragement that's just so heartwarming because that's really all my goal what is with the book is just to help people keep them inspired help them with a tool or a tip or technique or something to help them move forward along their own journey so that they can see that ripple effect because when they start moving forward it's going to impact other people as well too and so that's been really really rewarding is just to hear people's feedback from on the book yeah wonderful is there a sequel in the planning is there another publication coming in the future there is, Andy, there is. So um, one of the things that I have released since writing the book, uh, so the book's Never Quit on a Bad Day, Inspiring Stories of Resilience. And uh, one of the things in the book, every chapter has an uh, area called Reflections on Resilience. So it's kind of a little page or two that the reader can go through with a pen, their own journey. And then there's also a QR code that leads to a video of encouragement by the contributor. And so um, in my video of encouragement, I talk about an activity that was extremely powerful for me called Your Dream day and so I've created a workbook that's associated with that and that's called never quit on a bad day a guided workbook for creating good days so that's just came out and then I am working on the next book in the never quit on a bad day series as well too so that'll be released sometime in 2024 yeah and I'm going to expand your imagination here Albert. how about a movie or a tv series called never quit on a bad day produced by Phoebe Trotter Ooh, I like it, Andy. I like it. There has been, you know, some talks, podcasts and like little <laughs> clips and things like that. So we'll see. I'm open. I'm I'm very, I'm an open yeah. person because yeah. I feel like when you're open, it's just exciting to see. Now, when I say open, open with a vision for what I'm looking mm -hmm. to create and what I'm looking yeah. to do. That being yeah. said, as I said before, sometimes the route you take to do what you're looking to do can have a twist or a turn, right? So I'm definitely open. I think that would be fun to see and, and just to be able to share more people's stories. Wonderful, wonderful. Love it. <laughs> so in terms of where you live now, do you get the opportunity to be involved with young people in the area? Um, I'm looking at non-government funded organizations. You know, they have these places where they have these programs for the development of young people in terms of career opportunities and leading them and guiding them, how they should choose a career, how they should see their future, how they should visualize themselves and how to choose a career that would be rewarding for them. Do you have the opportunity to be involved in any programs like that in your area? 
Nothing on a regular basis. I have been invited to speak at different events where it is geared towards youth in terms of helping them just yeah. goal setting and yeah, visualization and passion projects and things like that. So I, and I do have one coming up in 2024 that I've been asked to speak at as well too, where it will be geared towards youth. I do run a program for kids, a soccer program under four to under seven. So even younger than, than the, those teenage years. And so um, that's a lot of fun just in terms of, you know, that because I believe sport is such an incredible vehicle for children to develop, yeah, learn yes. life skills, confidence, yes. teamwork, etc. And so that's just something that I absolutely love to do is, is to work with the little ones. And, and again, I'm open to how I can help and serve. And as, as different events in the community come up, when people reach out, if it's something that I'm able to accommodate schedule wise, then I'm absolutely there. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Phoebe. You know, I'm looking recently at some interviews by the late Kobe Bryant. Mm. That guy was such an inspiration to me. And every time I look at them, I, I, I feel passionately touched. I feel moved. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. thinking that at the age of, between the age of six to eight, he already knew what he wanted to do with his life. And he said that was the era where the birth of the Black Mamba lifestyle became a reality for him because there was so much odds against him. Mm -hmm. He wanted to play basketball, but he did not even have the physical attributes. Mm -hmm. And it was tough, but he had to work twice as hard. And eventually, he ended up working three times as hard as the average NBA player. Because when mm -hmm. they're out there at five, he's out there at four. Mm -hmm. They got in two sessions for the day, he got in three. What advice, Phoebe, would you give to young people? And I don't want to just restrict it to young ladies, but young people on the whole who know that they have a desire, passion for sport, but they lack certain physical attributes. How do you tell them, hey, there's a way in which you can get there and this is how you can do it. And eventually they will have that belief that yes, I can. So I think what you just shared is really powerful in that find examples of people who have done what you are looking to do. Yeah. And, you know, there's a saying success leaves clues, right? So finding yes. someone like a Kobe Bryant, incredible athlete who shared his story and how his work ethic, like that he worked so hard, like he worked so hard. His philosophy is like, there isn't anyone who's going to outwork me. So he, emb true. he embodied that in everything thing that he did. And so I think it's really important as young athletes, people who are people that are doing what you would like to do and can you learn from them? And when I say learn from them, it doesn't mean that, you know, maybe you'll be fortunate that they're, you can have a close relationship with them where they live in your area, you can see them or you can talk to them. That being said, we have so much information at our fingertips in terms of podcasts like this, video, uh, YouTube, right? Just going on YouTube, whether it's reading books, right? Reading books, attending workshops and conferences. Like there's so many places that we can access information. And I truly believe it's so important, especially as a younger person, who are you surrounding yourself with? Mm -hmm. Are you surrounding yourself with people who are going to, when you share their, your dream with them, they're going to say, yes, Andy, go after that. You got this. You can do this. Or are they saying, well, Andy, I don't know, you know, this could happen or this could like, so who are you surrounding yourself and who are you listening to? And again, if you don't necessarily have that family environment where they're going to say, yes, go after it, you can do it. Then how can you surround yourself from a you know, technology standpoint where you're listening while you go to work out, you might be listening to one of Kobe's interviews and picking yeah. up a gem and then applying it. You might be listening to another athlete that you look up to. You might be looking at an entrepreneur who's created an incredible lifestyle and you plug into that because there's so much information out there that we can access. We just have to choose what information do we want to fill ourselves with? Because that's what's so important is you fill yourself with that good stuff so that it, you're going to move forward in that, right? Again, with Kobe and his mentality and his work ethic, it was in, in him where that was just how he showed up. He showed up to be the best in everything that he did because he believed that. He knew he could do it by putting in the effort. And when we put in the effort behind the scenes, you get that confidence. Like, you know, I look back at my soccer career and I worked so hard behind the scenes. I was in my garage 
playing against the wall because my brother didn't want to play with me anymore, you know, or I was, you know, in the backyard by myself dribbling around my mom's plants because I wanted to practice. And so when you put in the effort off camera, if you will, it will show up when you're on camera yeah. and you'll have that confidence because you know, you put in the work. Yeah. And I applaud you. <laughs> Phoebe, I think you are an amazing coach. I think you have what I would consider inspirational attributes. In your entrepreneurial business, how do you communicate that level of mental toughness to the people that you deal with on a daily basis? What are the vehicles that you use? Yeah, so I think a big number one, leading by example. At the end of the day, we have to lead by example. If we want people to work with us, appreciate us, if we want to help people, we want to inspire people, it starts with us. Like, how, again, we talked about that accountability, looking in the mirror and being like, how am I showing up? And because I show up where, you know, my team and the people I work with, they know I've had bumps in the road. I talk about some of the bumps in the road in the book, right? So they know it, yet they still see me show up again, show up again, get a bump. Okay. Keep going, get a little detour, keep going. So they've seen that so that when I'm talking to them and we're having a conversation, you know, I can relate to them when they're discouraged and they're disappointed. I can say, you know what? I felt that exact same way too. Here's what I did. I kept going, you know? And so, and they, and it's not, they can appreciate it because they know it's real. And because I am very transparent in that, I believe that they know I'm coming from that good place where I want to help them move forward from it. And so I just share kind of some of the stuff that I've gone through, what I did to keep going, how I got active again, or act like busy in my business. And uh, because of that realness, and again, leading from it, by example, they were able to connect and help them in that way as well, if they choose to be helped and they choose to move forward because ultimately everyone has their own choices to make. Yep, they do. And we can inspire those choices. I want to show you something. And Hey friends, Phoebe Trotman here. Happy Friday. I hope you're having a wonderful day and a fabulous week. If you are watching live, go ahead and drop a one. Let me know where you're listening and watching from. And if you're catching the replay, thank you for watching the replay. Drop a two below and let me know where you're watching and listening in from. So it has been an actual month since uh, Never Quit on a Bad Day, Inspiring Stories of Resilience, Thriving Entrepreneurs Edition launch. And oh my gosh, you guys, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The support, uh, the feedback, the encouragement has been incredible. And I'm just so grateful to all of you for just the encouragement. Um, it has meant the world to me. And just hearing even the feedback from some of you who have gotten the book and who have read it, just it means so much. So I do want to say a massive thank you for that. I wanted to hop on here too, just to ask if you have received the book and you've read it and you're getting value from it, it would be amazing if you could leave a review. So wherever you got, if you got an Amazon, there is, is a review button in the orders. If you can just share a short review, that would be phenomenal. If you've received it from some other way, a Google review would be awesome. Just again, just to whatever, however you feel, just uh, to share it, that would be incredible. I really, really appreciate it. And I did want to hop on here because I want to hear from you guys. So if you've read the book, whether it's one chapter or the whole book, what chapter jumped out at you the most? What story, what reflections on resilience, um, what video of encouragement, what jumped out at you the most? For those of you who have had a chance to um, read through it, I'd love to hear from you. And I know the contributors would love to hear from you as well, too. So if there is a story or a lesson or something that really connected with you, please share that below. That would be incredible. And I did also want to hop on here with two announcements that I'm really, really excited. So so in uh, the so we can hold the announcements for the while but i'm curious what did you get out of the reviews what was the messages coming back to you i like the way you did that piece of marketing that's tremendous it's good public relations and you express thankfulness to the people that supported and you give them instructions there was a to-do moment but what did the reviews say to you phoebe the reviews have been amazing. I'm honestly so grateful. You know, we've had reviews where people started dreaming again, where they said they realized that they had stopped 
dreaming. And in reading the book, it inspired them to take action on their own dreams. Because again, in the Reflections of Resilience, it it prompts you to do stuff. It's it's very much an activity-based book in the sense that one of my goals was, again, to help people move forward. It wasn't just to, you know, read stories and just be like, okay, that's great for them. It was read stories, reflect on your own journey, and then take action to move forward. And so um, that meant a lot to, to hear from people in terms of that. The other thing that I loved is that people, if some people are reading it cover to cover, and some people are just like opening up a chapter and just reading it, which is actually how I really wanted it to be. So that, you know, sometimes it's hard to carve out time to read. We have busy schedules. And if you're not a person who's a big reader, you might be looking at and being like, oh, I don't, you know, but people have been able to just like open it up to a chapter, read that chapter, simmer on it, go through that and then move forward on their day. And so that means a lot as well, too. I've had people who have um, shared that they're doing it kind of as a mastermind. So every week they do a chapter and then they reflect on that chapter with their mastermind. That was such a cool way to, to read and enjoy the book. And then just people feeling inspired and feeling encouraged. And so um, the reviews have been phenomenal. And I just I love to read them because it does. It makes it makes me smile. It makes me feel warm. And and I think back to, you know, there was bumps in the road in publishing the book. And when I, when I think back to, you know, when I read someone's review and them being so encouraged and inspired by it, it just brings joy to my heart because then I, I do think back to some of the bumps and think like, well, what if I did quit on that bad day? Mm -hmm. Then this person wouldn't have been impacted or that person wouldn't have been impacted. And even bigger than that, the ripple of the people that they're going to touch because of how they feel now. And what if I didn't, what if I didn't finish what I started? Right. So. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Phoebe. Thanks for that surprise. That was uh, very, I was like, Oh my gosh. That's, <laughs> so thanks for uh, adding that in. That was, that's fine. You know, you know, the thing about us is that if we could just inspire one person every mm. single day of our lives, and we would have done the work that God has put us here to do. Mm -hmm. and I always say this to my people, and, and most of the times it also helps me. I believe that whatever we have and we are blessed with, and you, you see, I put the, the comment there for you to see. Loretta Packett said, hi, guys. Nice to be in. I'm listening. The thing about it is that when God placed us here, and this is my firm belief, you know, it is just a matter of understanding why did he place me on this planet? What is my purpose? Mm -hmm. When you find it, to me, you have to realize there is something that you're supposed to do with that purpose. Mm -hmm. And if you find that to do with the purpose and you put it together and it becomes something that is of value to you, you will then recognize the name you choose to use deserves an ROI on the investment made by putting you here. And so mm -hmm. when you look at life and you see that it is just one step that you need to go to the next level, why is it that so many people struggle? A friend of mine told me, he looked at it this way. He says, imagine I'm looking at the lake and I start swimming across the lake. And I reach halfway across the lake. And then I say to myself, wait a minute, why am I swimming across the lake? Mm. I can't swim across the lake. I can't even swim good. But the thing is, you've already reached halfway. Why not take the next step and finish? Mm -hmm. Why is it that people seem to think they can't do something without sometimes even trying? And sometimes they get halfway and they quit. Mm -hmm. And it's not even a bad day, but they quit. Mm -hmm. We need to find a way to bring them back, Phoebe. How can we do that? Well, I remember hearing the saying too a long time ago. It's uh, doubt will take you out of action. Action will take you out of doubt. And so uh, one of the things that's so important is that action. Like sometimes, you know, and I, I say this, this was a saying, I did a training on this, but it was like, say yes with your heart before your head tells you no. Sometimes we overthink things like, so yes, in that story of the swimming, 
it's because you pause to start thinking. It's like, sometimes you just have to keep going, right? You just have to keep moving, paddle, paddle, next stroke, next stroke. Because when we start to, and this comes back to what we talked about earlier too, about what are you filling yourself with? Because if you're filling yourself with good stuff and you're starting to learn how to control your thoughts to be on more on the positive side, it will help you when you start to pause and think and, you know, if, and so sometimes it just comes down to taking action. Yeah. Take action, take one step forward, right? In the swimming, just stroke. I, I, I'm not a great swimmer. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to think of what do you call it? Yeah, just pat. No, not paddle. Just keep stroking. Um, but yeah. you know, sometimes you just have to let's let's use running or walking because I get that you just have to take another step forward. So sometimes it's just taking that step. And in that activity, once we get forward, now we're seeing things in a different perspective because we're in another place. And so then it's reflecting there and going, okay, now take another step forward and take another step forward. And just sometimes in that movement of moving forward, you'll see things around you that you wouldn't have seen from back where you were before. So yeah. I, I truly believe action is such an important thing and just activity and getting busy. And again, having a little bit of clarity of what you're looking to create and why you're looking to do it. As you said, when you know your purpose, right? Like I truly believe like I am, I am meant to be, and I am an encourager and I'm a cheerleader and I love to cheer people on and encourage people. And so how I do that can be in different ways. It can happen on the soccer field as a teammate playing with another teammate. It may happen in coaching the kids program that I help to coach. It may happen in terms of the book. It may happen in this podcast. So there's different ways I can accomplish that to help and inspire people. And so that's the part I'm open to. However, what I am crystal clear on is my, my role in terms of being someone who leads by example and encourages people and inspires people by also taking action in terms of living and creating my best life too. Yeah, Phoebe, I'm gonna support what you say by taking a piece out of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s book. He was given a speech to a graduation class in South Alabama. And he was telling them that they should make their lives look like a blueprint. Mm. And he was asking them, think about what you want to put in the blueprint before you put the blueprint together. Mm -hmm. But don't ever stop taking action. And the key to the whole thing, he says, is you got to find a way to move from one stage to the next, despite the conditions that may surround you or the hindrances or anything that may seem to be in your way. Mm -hmm. and so the time may come when you may be able to fly. But if you can't fly, then walk. Mm -hmm. And if you find that you can't walk, crawl. And if you can crawl, do something, but just keep moving and mm -hmm. you said it's quit thinking take action take another mm -hmm. step just keep moving moving so phoebe we have come to the end of this wonderful conversation you have been an amazing guest and i want you now to share your information with the people how they can make contact with you they need you for a book talk a session uh an inspirational session they want to get your books just let them know how they can reach out on, I, I think it's the social hashtag medias um, so they can make contact with you. I'm going to help you a bit. Let me see. Absolutely. Yeah, I can get stuff here. So, and yeah, absolutely. So you can, we can connect on the, my website, which is just neverquitonabadday.com. I want to encourage you guys to go to that website. When you enter your email, you'll get a free chapter from the book. And it's such an important chapter because it's all about belief, which we talked about today, Andy, and it's all about language. What are you saying to yourself? What words, because words have power. So go to neverquitonabadday.com. You can also find online in terms of uh, in. Instagram, Phoebe Trotman's my personal page or never quit on a bad day as well as for the book. And then on Instagram, just flip it. It's Trotman Phoebe, which again is my personal. And then you can go to never quit on a bad day um, as well for Instagram too. And I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear what, what's, what value have you gotten out of this conversation today? And what are you going to take action on to move forward? Because as I said, I love to cheer people on. So I'd love to hear from the listeners, you know, what's something you're excited about that brings you joy and how can you do something today to move yourself closer to that 
Yeah, it's today that matters. It <laughs> is, it is. This moment, this moment, what you can do. So, this is Andy of Andy's Personal Development together with my special guest, Fiji Trotman. And we have been live in the break room with today's wonderful episode. I want you to remember our three watchwords. They are health, happiness, and prosperity. And I think on a different level, Phoebe epitomizes all three of those wonderful places that you can get to. This is the reason why we do what we do here. So until next time, this is Andy together with my guest Phoebe saying so long to you guys. Have a beautiful and wonderful day and make sure you enjoy the life that you've got. Your story matters. Godspeed. God bless. Shalom. Namaste. Bye for now, guys. Okay, so that's it. We are out and it's a done deal. <laughs> awesome. It still shows live. Are we still live? No, we are not. <laughs> oh, okay, it's still running there. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's taken a minute. But it's going to get there.